Hi everyone, Kimberly here and I'm going to show you how to add foil to your cards using stamped images. I'm using the April Hedgehog Hollow subscription box today and this month's box is all about music. This is the Music Speak stamp set from the box and I've already put the stamps on my block. I'm using the Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo and I found that using a makeup blender works for what I wanted to do here. I do have a bin with soapy water off to the side to put my stamps in until I can clean them. You do not want to let the gel dry on your stamps or it will ruin them. So to begin, I'm dabbing the gel on my blender and to make it less gloppy, I'm rubbing off some of it into the lid. Then I'm going to dab the gel on the stamps trying to get them fully covered. Now this is not going to show all of the fine detail and it will turn out a bit distressed, but the look is exactly what I was going for on this background. When I stamp, I want to make sure I pull straight up so I do not smear the image and hold the paper tight because it will stick a little. I'm going to set this aside for about an hour to dry, and once it is, it will look clear. When I'm done, I will use a toothbrush, water, and some Dawn soap to rub the gel off and clean my stamps so they don't get damaged. Next, I'm going to emboss the sentiment using Maker Forte Clear Embossing Ink. I have rubbed the anti-static bag over the Eclipse Black cardstock so the embossing powder only sticks to the ink. I do like to restamp a second time to get better ink coverage, and that is why I love my Misty. I can keep restamping my image until it is complete and crisp. I chose gold embossing powder because I thought it would look really nice with the henna gold in the lapis watercolor foil I'm going to use. And I like to use coffee filters when working with embossing powder because it's easy to pour the excess back into the jar and keep my area clean. When I heat emboss, I start underneath the cardstock and move over the image to warm up the heat tool and the powder so there's less of a chance some will blow away. Next, I want to cut my sentiment in half, and this We Are Memory Keepers journal trimmer is my favorite for trimming down sentiments. I love my Tim Holtz guillotine paper trimmer for everything, but I use this all the time when I need to trim down my sentiments. Now I'm going to use this big image from the Chin Up Buttercup stamp set. I'm stamping it on Eclipse Black cardstock and I'm going to be using the clear embossing ink and kaleidoscope powder. I do like to stamp it twice with the embossing ink to make sure that there's enough coverage and I'm going to be using my smusher tool over my Misty I find that it gets better ink coverage and I have to use less pressure pushing down on my stamp. Now I'm brushing the Neptune Kaleidoscope Powder over my image. This is absolutely my favorite kaleidoscope powder. They're all beautiful but the henna blue on white is gorgeous and on black it is such a nice shade of blue. I'm cleaning away the excess powder with my Maker Forte cleanup brush, and I'm going to set the powder with an aerosol hairspray I keep in my craft room. Once the transfer gel dries, it will look clear. I'm using Lapis Watercolor Deco Foil here. The dull side goes down against the transfer gel and the shiny side faces up. I'm running it through my mink machine that I've had to the side heating up on number three for a while. You want to make sure it's hot enough to transfer the foil. You may want to run it through two times, just to make sure. I like to let it cool for a second and then carefully peel the foil off the cardstock. If you see spots that need more foil, it's easier to line it back up before removing it completely. I really love the colors and the shine of this lapis watercolor foil. I did cut down the panel off camera to four inches by five and a quarter. Now it's time to piece the card together. I really like to use wet glue when I assemble my cards. It stays wet just long enough for me to line up my panels. I'm using my smusher to weigh down the card panel as it dries so it does not warp while I glue the next image to the gold card stock. Next, I will arrange the sentiment that I cut in half on both sides of this image with the clef and the music terms. I wanted to cut the sentiment in half because I knew I did not want to cover up the clef symbol.
Finally, I'm going to add foam tape to the back to pop it up and attach it to the card. And that's it. I really hope you liked my tutorial today, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.